Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In one of our previous videos, we talked about the different types of rotary pumps. If you haven't watched that video, we highly recommend that you do. The links are in the description. There are actually many more types of rotary pumps apart from the ones that we had discussed in our previous video. The first type of pump that we will be discussing is the vane pump. The operation of the vane pump is different from that of gear pumps and lobe pumps. The vane pump has a solid shaft rotating at an offset from the center of the casing. The shaft has slots in it to accommodate vanes. The vanes fit closely to the rotor shaft and are able to move in and out as the rotor rotates. The vane action is aided by springs. The pumping action is caused by the expansion and contraction of the rotor, vane and the housing. When the inlet valve is opened, fluid gushes into the pump. A part of the fluid is trapped between the rotating vanes of the pump. The vanes transport the fluid to the discharge port. As the fluid is being transported by the vanes, the total volume available is being reduced slowly. This forces the fluid out through the discharge pump. Here, the vanes on the shaft act as a sealing element and prevent direct flow of the fluid from the intake to the discharge port. Vane pumps usually operate at speeds of around 1000 rpm to 1750 rpm. These pumps are well suited to work with low viscosity fluids as they can easily fill the cavities. The speed of the vane pump is dependent on the viscosity of the fluid. Lower rotating speed is used for fluids with higher viscosity. Vane pumps are also not suitable for abrasive liquids or liquids with impurities in them. This is because these liquids can damage the vanes or get lodged in between the vanes and damage the pump. The biggest challenge in vane pumps is its design. This is because the vane pumps work by reducing the volume of the cavity. But fluids are incompressible. Due to this, the reduction of volume and the location of the vanes should be designed carefully. These pumps are most commonly used to transfer fuels. They are also used to fill LPG cylinders and refrigerator coolants. They are also used in the transfer of all sorts of low viscosity fluids. The next type of pump is the screw pump. The screw pumps use one or more rotating screws to pump the fluid. The screw pump was initially invented by the Greek inventor Archimedes. The Archimedes screw was used to transfer water from low-lying canals to irrigation ditches. The working of this pump is very simple. The screw consisted of a series of helical surfaces surrounding the central shaft. When the shaft is rotated, the bottom helical ends scoop the water. The water is then continuously pushed up the tube by the rotating helix until it exits the tube. The screw and the tube are not required to be watertight as long as the amount of water scooped up is large. The shaft was generally rotated either by a windmill or by manual labor. Most modern screws also work by the same principle. These pumps have two or three screws. The screws rotate in the opposite directions. As the screws rotate, the fluid gets trapped in between the cavities of the screws. The fluid is then transported to the output side where it is discharged. The biggest advantage of the screw pump is that they can pump extremely viscous fluids. They are used in chemical plants and oil refineries. The concept of the screw pump is also used to propel vehicles in places where conventional wheels are not effective. Screw propelled vehicles are used in marshes, snow and in deserts. The next type of pump is the peristaltic pump or the roller pump. The peristaltic pump has a flexible tube fitted inside a circular pump casing. A rotor rotates in the middle of the casing with rollers attached to it. The number of rollers depend on the pump. The rollers are in constant contact with the flexible pipe. When the rotor is rotated, a part of the pipe is compressed. As the rotation progresses, the fluid inside the pipe is pushed against the outlet. The biggest advantage of the peristaltic pump is that the pump components do not come in contact with the pumped fluid at all. Due to this, the pump was initially developed to be used in heart surgeries as an artificial heart to pump blood through the body. These pumps are also used in the chemical industry to pump extremely corrosive fluids which could damage normal metallic pump components. Well, that's it for today's video guys. If you found it interesting and learned something new, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. This motivates us to make many new videos for you guys. Take care, stay safe and bye.